Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about ICZN. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So the full form of ICZN is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And this ICZN is also known as ICZN Code. So basically. ICZN is a book which contains rules that govern the scientific names of animals. That means if you want to keep the name of a newly discovered animal, you must follow the rules of ICZN. Okay, so the publisher of this book is International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature. Let's talk about the principles of ICZN. So basically there are six principles. First is principle of binomial nomenclature. The scientific name of a species is a combination of a generic name and a specific name. For example, the scientific name of human is Homo sapiens. So Homo is the generic name or genus and sapiens is the specific name or species. Next is principle of priority. So the oldest published name is the valid name. So in 1815, George Ord kept the scientific name Antilocapro Americana for pronghorn. Okay. And in 1855, John Edward Gray kept the name Antilocapra antiflexa for the same species. And pronghorn is an antelope. Now this Antilocapra americana, this name took priority because it was published earlier. Right, this name was published earlier since uh, it was named in 1815. Right, so in this way it works. Next is principle of coordination. So when a new zoological name is published, it automatically establishes all corresponding names in relevant ranks. For example, the scientific name of giraffe is Giraffa camelopardalis Linnaeus 1758. Here Giraffa is the genus, camelopardalis is the species. Now the subgenus of this is Giraffa, Giraffa, Linea 1758. This is the subgenus part. And the subspecies is Giraffa, Camelopardalis, Camelopardalis, Linea 1758. This is the subspecies part. So from the scientific name itself, you can know all the other names. Next is principle of first revisor. So when there are conflicts between published names, the first subsequent author can decide which name takes precedence. For example, in 1758, Linnaeus found two owl species and named them Strix scandiaca and Strix noxua. Later, it was found that both of them were same. They were snowy owls. So, in 1931, Longborg, who was the first revisor, kept the name Strix Scandiaca. So it's his choice. Next is principle of homonymy. So name of each taxon must be unique. Okay, so in 1777, uh, Forster gave the name Echidna to the Eels. Again, in 1797, uh, Cuvier gave the name Echidna to the spiny anteater. Okay, uh, so uh, each taxon must be unique, right? So Echidna for eels was selected since it was published earlier in 1777, and this name was rejected for spiny anteater since it was named later okay 
and the last principle is principle of typification so every named species has a designated type specimen which acts as a reference point for accurately identifying that species for example the scientific name of gray wolf is canis lupus and this is the type specimen that means if a scientist discovers a new wolf it would be compared to the type specimen to determine if it is a new species or a variation of the existing gray wolf so this is all about today's lecture i hope you liked the lecture thank you for watching my video